Okay, can you do some analysis on Tesla's stock for me? Let's see what it gives us. Okay, looking pretty good. Got the overall summary, quantitative snapshot, gives us the chart inside of here, and then goes into the detailed technical analysis, the qualitative context, and how it all combines. Sweet. Hey, everybody. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to create an AI agent in N8N that can analyze any stock you want. We're going to do technical analysis on charts we grabbed from chartimage.com. We're going to do sentiment analysis via Tavly by scraping the web for relevant news articles. And then we're going to combine it all together to give you an output that actually makes sense. Okay, so let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to build is that AI agent base. Because remember, we're going to have two different tools that we're going to call. We're going to call the Tavly tool to do kind of like that sentiment analysis. And then we're going to have the actual stock analyzer tool that's doing the technical analysis. And that's all going to be coming into here. This is where it's all going to get synthesized and give us that final output. So for the chat model, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use OpenAI, and we're just going to use 4.1. Now for memory, well, we'll just keep this super basic. We're just going to do simple memory. And then when it comes to the actual trigger, we're just going to be doing this inside of the NADN chat. Now you can do whatever you want with this, right? You could hook this up to some sort of front end you build on the lovable. You could have this be an agent tool itself, right? You could have this connected to another larger agent, but just for this guide, we're going to be using the chat message. So next we're going to have our two tools, right? The Tavily and the stock tool. So for the Tavily tool, that's just going to be an HTTP request, but the stock tool, and that's what we'll work on first, that itself is going to be a separate workflow. So for that, we're going to do call NADN workflow tool. We're gonna to call this the stock tool. And then for the description, we'll say call this tool to conduct technical analysis. Now, uh, we haven't created the workflow yet, but eventually we'll be able to choose it from the list. So let's also rename this um, stock agent. And now we're gonna save this workflow and we're gonna open up another workflow and that's where we're gonna build out the stock tool. Okay, so the first step is going to be when executed by another workflow, we're going to do accept all data. And as always, we're gonna put in some mock data here. So we can delete this part, we can delete this, delete that comma. And we'll just do the query. And we're going to put in some sort of ticker here, right? So for this example, we're just going to do Tesla. Save that, and it's going to pin it. All right, next we're going to do an edit fields because we're just going to, um, we're going to set that ticker as a variable. So we're going to map Tesla into here, and we're just going to call this ticker. That way down the line and throughout the rest of this automation, we can just refer to it as ticker. So we can test the step and we'll see, hey, ticker now shows as Tesla and let's pin that data as well. And now the next thing we need to do is actually go ahead and grab the chart that we're gonna do for our analysis. And that's gonna require an HTTP request. So now before we fill all this module out, we're actually gonna go to chart-image, which is the website that's gonna give us our charts. So here we are inside of chartimage.com. You're gonna go ahead and just create an account. And once you're signed in, you'll see all the different stuff that's available to you in terms of a subscription. So all we need for this, we're just gonna be using the basic plan for this, which is free. We can get 50 calls a day. It's going to have a watermark on the chart itself, but if this is something you wanna scale up, you can see your options. Also, you can get your API key here. So just have that handy. Next, we're gonna to go to API documentation up top. Okay, so here we are inside of the API documentation and chart image, and there's actually a lot going on here, but I'll show you what you want to be looking at. So over here on the left hand side, we're going to go to trading view snapshot v2. And what you're going to see here is all the different things you can pass in that HTTP request, right, all the different parameters that you can put. These are kind of the big ones right here. So what I'm going to show you is a certain example. But this is where you can go ahead and look and be like, okay, well, I want a different time frame, or I want the chart to be different height and width, or I want it to be a different time zone. This is where you can look and see what your options are and how you can customize this for your own stuff. And on the right hand side, what you're going to see is some examples of different sorts of charts and what the requests would look like. So if we go ahead and look at something like this, like this Microsoft MACD chart, 
we'll see here on the bottom below everything you would need to put into an HTTP request to get this same sort of looking chart, right? So if I wanted this, this is what my request would have to look like. And so this is the one we'll play around with as an example, and then I'll show you how inside of NADN you could actually manipulate the different parameters. But to start, you're going to come down here, and we're going to copy this curl request. So you can go ahead and just either copy it manually or do copy to clipboard. And then we're going to go back inside of here. You're going to go to import curl, and you're just going to paste all that in. And you can get this, delete that part at the top if you want. You're going to do import. And then you'll see it just filled out a bunch of stuff for us. So what do we need to change here? Well, first thing up top, you're going to do backslash storage. This way we can actually store the image. And then you're going to replace this with your actual API key. And once you have the API key in there, here is where we can actually change stuff inside of our request. So we're going to switch to expression. And then I'm going to blow this up so you can see it. Now, the first thing we're going to want to change, right, is the symbol, right? We don't necessarily want Microsoft. We want this to be dynamic based on what we put in to our agent. So we're going to map this ticker here. So now it says NASDAQ Tesla. And if I told the agent Microsoft, it would have been NASDAQ Microsoft. And then we have some other, uh, other stuff here, right? Volume, the name of the chart we're looking at, the signal line with the color. Understand we could change all this and make all this stuff dynamic, right? You could set up your agent where you put in like the ticker name, the name of the chart you want, you know, the interval, right? We can make all this dynamic as much as we want, right? So you can really, really customize it. And this is where you're customizing it. And remember, right, if I wanted to change the name or I want to change the interval and I don't know what those could be changed to, again, come back here to the API documentation and it will explain it to you. And if that's still too confusing, copy paste all this, throw it into ChatGPT, throw it into Gemini and start querying it that way. But this is what we're gonna do to start. So the other thing we need to do is we wanna go from response format file to JSON. Now, once you've done all that, let's test the step and see if it actually gives us the chart we want. Okay, so we see here on the top right, we got a URL. And just to confirm, let's copy and paste that into our browser. And cool, there's our chart. So the next step is going to be able to download that chart, do some analysis on it, and then send that back up to our main agent. All right, next step is going to be to actually download that image. So you're going to go do HTTP request. It's going to be get, and then the URL is just going to be mapped from here. So let's test that step. Did it get the chart? Take a look at the view. There we go. Now we want to pass that chart into some sort of AI so it can now do some analysis for us. So for that, we're going to do basic LLM chain. We're going to do define below. We'll come back to what we'll put in that prompt in a second. Come down here to add prompt. Go to user. Message type is going to be image. It's going to be binary. And you can keep all that the same. Now, let's talk about this prompt because this is where you're going to actually make your money when it comes to the technical analysis on this chart. In this case, we're doing a MACD chart. So I probably want a system prompt that is specific to that sort of analysis. If you are using a different kind of chart or a different time length, right? That's where you need to customize this. So I'm gonna show you how I came up with my system prompt. And then obviously you can copy it from the template from the school as well, All right? So here's a look at my system prompt for this, right? It breaks it down into how I want to interpret certain elements, what the time frame is and what I want the actual output to look like. But I obviously didn't come up with this myself. So what I did is I went to Gemini, which is my favorite AI right now. And all I did was I said, hey, Imagine you're an expert in prompt engineering. What should the prompt look like for the system prompt if we want the best possible analysis on a MACD chart? And he gave me this. And honestly, it's been pretty good. It even gives reasons why it thinks the prompt is really good. So just in general, when it comes to system prompts, go ahead and go to AI and see what it can build for you. And so once we got that in there, uh, we're going to go ahead and test this step. And as always, I forgot to actually attach a model to this thing. So we'll just back out real quick, go to model. I'm going to use just 4.1 mini for this. And now let's check it out. Okay, so we can see it gave us a pretty detailed output, which is good enough for now. And so next thing we do is we want to map some responses so it knows what to send back up to that main agent. So we're just gonna go to edit fields. So once you're inside here, we're gonna call this response and we're gonna map both the output 
and we're going to map that uh, image. So make sure you're taking that from the HTTP request one, that second HTTP request that actually downloaded it. And then you can test the step. Sweet, back out of here, we're going to save this, and then we're just going to map that to that main agent. So I just wanted to real quickly give a plug for my school community where you can get all the templates and more guidance on all the AI agents you see in my videos here. I also have even more videos that you can't find on YouTube, including stuff for marketing, AI agents for business, RAG agents, and all sorts of stuff. Our community is growing rapidly, so would love to have you there. And if you're looking for a place to kind of level up in your AI agent game, check us out. There's a link down in the description. So here we are back with that orchestrator agent, and now we've completed our stock tool. So we're going to come into here and we're just going to find it. So we should have stock tool demo, which I got for me. And we're all set. Next, we're going to be using Tavly to actually do some sentiment analysis on the stock we're looking for. So we're going to start this out by going to the chat message and just putting in some fake data, as always. So get rid of all this. We're going to call this query as well. And we're just going to put in whatever ticker you've been using. So in this case, we'll just put in S. Save that. Next, come to tool, do HTTP request. And here's where we're going to fill out all the Tavly stuff. So we're going to go ahead and go to Tavly.com. And Tavly.com, if you've never used it before, it's a great web scraping web search tool for LLMs. And the best part is you get a thousand credits a month for free, which is great. And it refreshes every month. So once you log in, you'll have your API key right here. So have that handy. And then we actually need to fill this out, right? So come to documentation on the left. You're going to go to quick start. You're going to scroll down here. You're going to find curl. We're going to copy that. Jump back into here, go to import curl, paste that in there. And there we go. So let's rename this to Cavalry tool. Description will say, call this tool to conduct sentiment analysis on the stock. And now we just need to edit a couple things, right? So put your API key here. Next, we want to change the query. And for this, we're just going to have let the model define this parameter, right? So based on the conversation we have with our AI agent, it's going to intelligently decide on what to put for the query. And now we have a few more parameters we can add here. So we're going to do search depth. We're going to do advanced. Then we're going to do days. We're going to do seven. Now, where did I come up with these parameters? Again, this was inside the Tavily documentation. Um, take a look around. There's a ton of different parameters you can play with. You can quite literally go here to the API playground and see which parameter does what it gives an explanation and then you can actually test it out here but this will be enough for our purposes so we're going to back out of that and now comes the system prompt for our ai agent right so this is going to be really important because you know we need a system prompt that tells it logically how to sift through the information how to send it to the tools and then how to synthesize it all together. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Gemini, basically tell it exactly what I just told you and have it create some sort of system prompt for me. So here's what the system prompt looks like that it gave me, right? It explains what the inputs are going to be, what I want the process to be, right? I want you to identify the ticker. I want you to do some qualitative context and sentiment analysis with Tavily. Then I want you to do a deep dive into the technicals, combine it all together, and then give me some sort of output I can actually work with. You also know at the bottom, I also put in the time. And so here's me going into Gemini. I kind of gave it an example of what I was using already for system prompt. And I just kept going back and forth with it, asking to get me something that was better. And again, this exact prompt is inside the template. And so once you put that in there, let's actually test this out. So we can go ahead and test that. And um, of course, I forgot something super simple, <laughs> the actual simple memory. Uh, looks like we have simple memory, so I'm not sure why this is erroring out. So I'm just going to save this, refresh it. I love some live troubleshooting. Um, I'm just going to unpin this, right? And then let's actually just take it from the top and see how it goes. So let's open up a chat message and we'll say we're literally just going to type in Tesla and see how this goes. So we see it's hitting both the tools. 
which we love to do. It hit finished up with Havily first. And now it's going through the actual analysis with the stock tool. Now, hopefully what we should see is a pretty robust output that includes either a link to the image or the image itself embedded in this response. Okay, let's take a look. Gives us an overall summary. Gives us a quantitative snapshot with like market cap and revenue. Actually embeds the chart into the response, which is nice. Goes into detailed technical analysis, qualitative context, great integrated outlook. Cool. And then even gives us the chart again at the bottom, along with kind of like a final bottom line. So pretty good. We can go ahead and look through the logs and see how it did all this, right? We can see it went into Tavoli. It the all we said was Tesla and the query it put in. Remember, we had the AI figure that out. It said Tesla, recent news, stock sentiment, and analyst outlook. We can see its actual uh, sources as well and what the content was. And then lastly, it went to the stock tool and it pushed this response into there. And then we can kind of see everything going into work, right? So this is the actual like last step and we can see the input that went into it. So you can see how it grabs the system prompt. You can see how it also gets this detailed like MACD analysis from our stock tool. You can see the image it passes. And then we also see the Tavoli tool. So um, that's nice to see. It's actually doing what we want it to do, right? It's taking both stuff. It's not just taking one and not the other. Um, and that's why always with these kind of like robust multi-tool um, agents, always go through the logs to make sure stuff is actually getting the data it's supposed to. Because if it wasn't, it could probably still give us a decent output that looks legit, but isn't really, really that great. And so if you followed up this far, like congratulations, you created a uh, AI agent that's able to search the internet and do analysis on whatever stock you give it. Um, I'd continue playing around with it, go into that stock tool, mess around with the parameters as much to really customize it, and then just know you're really going to make your money in these system prompts, right? So if you're not getting what you want from this, go into the system prompts, go back and forth with AI, and really, really customize it. So um, yeah, as always, let me know how this worked for you, and good luck.